Hi everyone, and welcome to my travel vlog on Oahu and the big island of Hawaii. So we just landed in Honolulu airport and we are starving. We are craving some dim sum so our driver took us to the Ala Moana Center shopping mall. And on the 4th floor terrace, we came to the Jade Dynasty Seafood Restaurant. The wait was about 30 minutes for a walk-in on a Saturday and the food came out quickly. But for a place that has the best Chinese food ever awards back to back, I'm quite disappointed. We definitely had better dim sum elsewhere and I passed on the shrimp and scallop fried rice as it felt overly oily. However, I really did like their seafood congee, the scallop hagao, and the spare rib. Overall, I said 6.7 out of 10 for dim sum. After lunch, we had to burn off some calories so we walked about 12 minutes to Don Quixote. And I was super excited to find one in Hawaii. Now let's go to my brother Jovan for some commentary and stuff. Okay, okay, guys. Now here we got the anime section, the Bandai Namco. Uh, we are looking at every type of fucking Gundams you can think of. Look at, look at all these beautiful Gundams. Mmm. Look at what this man's looking at. Mm hmm He's probably gonna pick that up and buy it. We then took an Uber to our hotel. Located in the heart of Waikiki, the Alo Hilani Resort is just steps away from the beach and all the shopping and dining that the area has to offer. The resort itself is modern and stylish with a beautiful two-story, 280,000 gallon oceanarium located in the lobby. The rooms are spacious and clean with comfortable beds. We booked the premier oceanfront room and it was located on the fifth floor, the same location as the famous saltwater infinity pool and bar. For dinner, we went to Tonkatsu Tamafuji. Now I actually tried to get a reservation online 3 weeks prior, however everything was booked out so I assumed I wouldn't be able to try this place. Luckily, I still walked by and it was only about 15 minutes wait for a walk-in at 7.30 on a Saturday. I wasn't a fan of the red miso soup, I was just a bit on a bitter end. But the white miso soup base is very flavorful. We had the Junjetsu pork katsu set, 5 piece shrimp katsu set, and a sizzling plate pork loin katsu set. It took a while to get the food but it did taste as good as it looks. You grind your own sesame seeds and choose which sauce you want to mix with that. Very interesting, very tender. Nice thin layer of batter on the outside. And it's crisp. You can see that shit flanking off the fucking hot soup. Now, can you guys please let me enjoy my meal? Alright, you heard him man, let's eat. The next morning, we started our day with some pokey that's 2 minutes walk from our hotel. We went to the Maguro spot and oh boy did this lift to the hype. The pokey was incredibly fresh and you have to try the marlin that's locally caught. We had the spicy mayo and the teriyaki bowl. The next morning, we arrived at the International Marketplace for lunch and went to Shorefire located on the 3rd floor. We ordered the local moko, chicken quesadilla, kalbi and egg, the original mai tai, and a traditional mimosa. Let's see what Jovan said about the food. So, how was the food? It was good, it looked just a little salty, you know, I'm not gonna lie. It's salty, but it was good, as you can tell. Um, this, it got kind of cold, but, you know, a little sweet, you know. I had better cowboy in my life. You go to H Mart, you go to H Mart, and the um, fresh section, is better cowboy. My dad flew in this morning and really wanted to eat authentic Vietnamese food. So we're going to Chinatown. This here is Kue Hung, and ironically, one of my favorite Vietnamese restaurants in the States. The Gan Chua, also known as Sour Soup, is heavenly and comforting on a stormy day. This is a must try for those wanting good, authentic Vietnamese food on the island. Alright, that was a lot of food, so let's get some walking in to Manoa Falls. Welcome to Manoa Falls, a popular 1.7 miles round trip hike that takes about 1 hour to complete. The trail is full of shade, but expect some mud and lots of incline. This is a great way to immerse in the beauty of the surrounding tropical rainforest. Lanakai Beach is located on the windward side of Oahu and is known for the clear crystal water and pristine white sand. As soon as we arrived, we were stuck by the beauty of the surrounding. The water was a stunning shade of turquoise and the sand was soft and inviting. 
We saw failed snorkelers, but this time we did not attempt it. Definitely give this a try. Just a short drive away is the tropical farm's macadamia nut, which is a great pit stop for souvenirs and free tasting with a variety of macadamia nut flavors. You can also get Kona coffee here if interested. Two minutes from there is where you see all of our Asian friends squat next to Chinaman's hat inside Koloa Regional Park. Now, it's time to wave goodbye to Oahu and visit our neighbor here in Kona Big Island. First stop is Ella Now because nothing else unfortunately is open right now. It's a classic and you can't really go wrong with it. On our way to South Point, we visited a small family farm called Paradise Meadows. There's pigs and pears to name a few animals. But there's a reason this place is 5 star. The staff were friendly and knowledgeable. They let you sample everything, and I mean everything. We have the opportunity to drive to Black Sand Beach after lunch. The beach is located on the island's rugged east coast and is known for a striking black sand created by the volcanic eruption. As soon as we arrived, we were struck by the beauty of the surroundings. The black sand was a stark contrast to the crystal clear water. To end the day, we tend to Tashima for dinner, a small family-owned restaurant that started as a tofu shop in 1899. We ordered the number two, which included miso soup, sashimi, sukiyaki, fried fish, a classic Japanese lunch, the lokomoko, some fried tofu, and the beef fried rice omelette, and my personal favorite, the steak and shrimp. The next day, we stopped by Randy's Hui Chicken and Riz for breakfast. The atmosphere is laid back here with simple picnic style seating outdoors. The menu focuses on Hawaiian style barbecue with a variety of options including gooey chicken, roast pork, ribs, and brisket. We opted for the whole gooey chicken and half a rack of ribs with a side of mac and cheese and some freshly squeezed tangelo juice and man nothing disappointing. The next day, on our way from Kona to Hilo, we visited the famous Hilo Farmer's Market. The market was bustling with activity, with vendors selling everything from fresh fruits and vegetables to handmade craft and jewelry. Just 7 minutes down the road, we reached Waluku River State Park, home to the famous Rainbow Falls. Once you reach the viewing platform, the sight of Rainbow Falls is truly breathtaking. The falls are quite tall and the wild falls in a cascading fashion creating a beautiful and peaceful atmosphere. Located just 11 miles from Hilo is Akaka Falls State Park, home to Kahuna and Akaka Falls, a stunning waterfall that cascades down over 400 feet. Expect to pay an entrance fee of $5 per person, but it is worth it. The well paved hike is surrounded by lush tropical vegetation and the sound of falling water creates a peaceful and serene atmosphere. Moving on, we drove to Kilauea Volcano National Park. The national park is home to humongous geological features from lava tubes to craters to cinder cones. Unfortunately, we missed the lava flow by a few weeks, but the site was still mesmerizing. Now there's numerous viewing areas, so given that we were pressed for sunlight, we opted to take a shortcut to the volcanic inn to immerse in the glory of an active volcano. Today's our last day and oh boy we needed some coffee to jumpstart our morning. We saw Haiko across the street from Ameki and ordered the ube latte, a Haiko tini, and a frashaka which I really recommended. Mmm, it's like Christmas in Hawaii. Our tummy is full and I realized that we haven't filmed any snorkeling videos. Well, for those that like Hanama Bay and Oahu, this place costs two steps is a hundred times better. Other than a five dollar parking fee, it's free to enter and there's nowhere as crowded. Check out our montage of this beautiful last day on a perfect snorkeling beach. Thank you everyone for watching our first vlog. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.